Um, I'm not sure we were live until this moment. Are we live now? <laughs> hello, hello. Yeah, okay, we're live now. Uh, let's try that again. That is the first of what I hope are not too many technical glitches. Uh, I'm Paul Lucas of UniWatch. Uh, this is my first Facebook Live event, so hopefully you can be uh, a little patient with the technical issues as we get them sorted out. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And I thought um, I wanted to take advantage of the live, live streaming capabilities of Facebook uh, and also uh, you know, people are bottled up inside because of the pandemic and because of winter. It's really cold here right now today. Uh, and so what I thought I would do is first take some questions from you guys, uh, which you can post and which I see. At, yes, I can see questions as they're being posted in comments. Uh, so you can comment on this live stream. Uh, and if you have a question, I will try to get to it. Uh, and to give you guys some time to post questions, I thought I would spend a little time showing a few items from my vintage jersey collection. Uh, if you're a longtime UniWatch reader, you know that I don't actually buy retail jerseys. Uh, I'm a huge, huge Mets fan. I'm a big 49ers fan. Go Niners this Sunday against the, the Cowboys. Uh, but I don't buy, um, you know, Mets apparel or Mets merchandise or anything like that or 49ers apparel. Uh, I am much more interested in things from... Uh, like factory softball teams or high school teams or things like that because I, I think they have more interesting stories to tell uh, and each one is a little piece of history. Uh, so what I'm wearing right now is, uh, I, I love the, the giant BS. That's a really important ampersand there because without it, it's, it's just BS, right? Uh, so the uh, this is uh, from a, a company softball team for Briggs & Stratton, uh, the engineering firm. They are, and if, I, if I'm going to move up a little here, you can see it says Briggs & Stratton Parts. Um, and they are headquartered in Wisconsin, but uh, this particular jersey, I'm pretty sure, was worn by a team near their Missouri factory. They have a plant in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. And the reason I think that is, I'm going to try and share my screen here. Let's see how that goes. Hold on a second. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh no, I don't know how to share my screen. Uh, <laughs> I seem to have lost that capability. Okay, so that's another technical glitch that I'm gonna have to learn how to figure out. Uh, but take my word for it that the tag, which you can't really see because it's down at the bottom here, the tagging on this says that it is from Johnny Mac Sporting Goods in Westwood, Missouri. So when I saw that, and then I looked up where Briggs and Stratton had uh, plants and factories and things like that, and I realized, oh, this must have been from their Poplar Bluff, Missouri uh, factory. And I, I just love this jersey. You can see it has sort of a, a Red Sox font uh, on the lettering, uh, very similar to what the Red Sox wear. Has name and number on the back. I don't know if you guys can see that clearly. Uh, and it's just a great jersey. I, 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 to me, this is much more interesting and more fun than uh, a Mets jersey or, or any of the sort of mass-produced stuff. I'm not knocking it. You know, if you, if you collect those kind of things, that's great. More power to you. Uh, but I'm more interested in this kind of stuff. I do, however, have <laughs> uh, UniWatch girl mascot Caitlin is about to make a, a guest appearance for people who have been asking. <laughs> this is Caitlin. Uh, who has been the UniWatch mascot for a long time. And she pretty much has the run of the house. So uh, we are here by her express permission. Uh, so I do have, uh, aside from uh, these sort of obscure kinds of, of jerseys, I do have one mass market item from a, a very famous team, but it's not a jersey. Uh, and so what I have here, this is really special. This is a, an official Green Bay Packers dickey. Uh, and you can see it, it's almost like a washcloth <laughs> with a hole inside. Uh, and it has this great uh, yellow stripe around uh, the mock turtleneck collar. Uh, and if you look at the tagging, which I will hold up for the camera, you can see that it was made exclusively for the Green Bay Packers by McGregor Sandnit. And this was an official uh, Packers item, and since I can't share my screen or I don't know how, uh, I was I was ready for this problem, and so here, 
This is a photo of Packers running back Donnie Anderson in the aftermath of the ice bowl uh, in the Packers locker room where uh, they are celebrating beating the, the Dallas Cowboys in the, the famous ice bowl game in 1967. And he is wearing a dickie just like this. And then here are quarter, quarterbacks Bart Starr and Zeke Bratkowski. And you can see Bart Starr uh, has, uh, he's also wearing the dickie under his shoulder pads. And so this was a, an official team issued item for players who, who just wanted like a, a collar, uh, a, little, a little more warmth uh, for a, a base layer with a, a collar to protect their, their neck. Uh, and I just love that there, there was that specific an item. I've never seen these for any other team but the Packers, uh, but it's just an amazing item. I did wear this once, uh, not with a jersey, but just like under my, uh, like a flannel shirt when I was at a bar in Wisconsin. And, and it was on a Sunday and everyone was watching the Packers game. And uh, I got a kick out of the idea that amidst all these Packers fans, I was the one who had this really special piece of, of game issued Packers gear. Uh, so that's a, sort of a, a choice item uh, from my collection. Uh, but most of the things I own uh, are not from teams like the Green Bay Packers, not from big top level pro teams. Uh, here, uh, this is also a Wisconsin item. This is a heavy flannel baseball jersey uh, from what was then called Wisconsin Aluminum Goods. Uh, they eventually became Miro, which is a pots and pans company that I think is still in business. They certainly were in business as recently as 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, and you may, you may own some Miro uh, pots and pans in your kitchen. Uh, and I got this uh, at a Wisconsin thrift store around 2000. And I had just started doing UniWatch uh, in 1999. And what really struck me about this, once I got it home and, and you know, looked at it and uh, at the time, I was still learning a lot. Of, I mean, I knew a lot about uniforms, but I was still learning a lot of the terminology and a lot of the details that we now take for granted. Uh, and one thing I noticed was that the lettering on the word aluminum, you know, the way it was, I, I didn't know the term vertically arched yet. That was a new phenomenon to me. But I noticed that the, uh, the two, let me reach here that the, uh, the M's and the U's in the word aluminum were individually cut. They were custom cut based on their position within the word. And I realized, oh, that, that's different than just fanning the letters out, letting the letters stay all the same uh, and just fanning them out. That, they, that their, their position within the word aluminum depended uh, or determined how much of a slant they had. And that was my introduction really to the the concept of vertical arching versus radial arching uh, and once i realized that then i sort of investigated and i talked to some friends of mine who knew about typography and and that's how i learned the difference and at that time of course there were still more teams especially the atlanta braves uh who used vertically arched uh lettering on the on the na players names on the back of the jersey uh and i had sort of noticed that but i hadn't really put it together in my mind how that differed from other teams that use the more conventional radial arching. And so this jersey, that, that uh, Wisconsin Aluminum Goods jersey, that was sort of a formative moment for me when I acquired that jersey and, and noticed the lettering. Uh, what else do I have here? This is something I got off of eBay a while ago. This must be about 15 years ago. This is a, a Teamsters softball jersey. And on, on the back, you can see that the, uh, the secretary and treasurer of this Teamsters local was Jackie Presser. Uh, and that's what makes this uh, particularly uh, historically significant as a jersey. Jackie Presser went on to become uh, the president of the Teamsters. He was also an FBI informant. He was also indicted for all sorts of things, as so many Teamsters uh, presidents and high officials were. Uh, and so this is sort of an interesting piece of uh, American labor history. Uh, I usually wear this on Labor Day, in fact, because uh, it seems appropriate. Uh, all of these fit me. I, 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 only, uh, I only acquire jerseys if, uh, if I can actually wear them. I know some people feel differently about that. They just like to own things to own them, and that's fine too. I'm just saying for me, I only buy things that I can wear. This is a really nice cotton flannel, not wool flannel, a cotton flannel uh, Jersey from a, a, you can see it says City Bakery, uh, Red Devil City Bakery. 
Uh, what I love about this one is that the lettering, let's see if I can get it close to the camera. The lettering is just beautifully chain stitched. It's just gorgeous chain stitched work. Um, even the white lettering here is nicely chain stitched. Uh, really nice uh, piece of, of craftsmanship on this jersey, especially for something that was, you know, just for a, a bakery team. And let me t let me take a look here at some of the comments and questions that have come in. Ba, 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 ba. Someone says no green and yellow jerseys. I do have a lot of green and yellow jerseys, but I didn't want to be that predictable. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Not a lot of questions, actually. Feel free to ask questions, people. I will do my best to, to answer them. Um, I also have a bunch of these. This is a, a warm-up jersey for a basketball team. And these were really popular around the 60s and early 70s. Uh, they're all made of Doreen. They tend to be these, the ones where it's, it just has sort of a half zipper. Uh, and Doreen is a fabric that's not used anymore. It's uh, usually a mix of cotton and rayon. Uh, it has a real sort of sheen or shininess to it, and it's somewhat stretchy. Uh, when I was growing up, it was pretty common for, for jerseys. Uh, it's, it's not really used anymore. Uh, but it's great for the, these um, basketball warm-ups. So this one, I'll again put this close to the camera. That's a chain-stitched Blue Jay patch there because this team was called the Blue Jays. And it was for a high school, Delphi St. John's, which I meant to look up and to remind myself where they're located. But the school still exists. It's a high school, uh, Catholic high school, and I can't remember where, they are, where they're located. But their teams are called the Blue Jays. Uh, and it's just a really, really nice uh, jersey. And then there, I have this one with this great candy striping or barber striping. It's on the sides. And this was for a team that was sponsored by State Farm Insurance uh, and your local State Farm agent, Marvin, I don't know how you pronounce that, but uh, another, to me, this is sort of a story, you know, that, that an actual person wore this uh, in some town. Um, and this was his warm-up jersey, and I love that. To me, that that's more special uh, than um, you know a, a mass-produced retail jersey. But again, that's just me. Uh, so I get a kick out of these. I do wear them, um, and I have a lot more. Uh, and I I'm still acquiring some of them. I sort of feel like I've maxed out on jerseys. I don't need that many more. But I I like looking at them on eBay, uh, even if I don't bid on them or buy them. Uh, so. Let's see. Here's a question from Holly Hick, who I, who I have met, although it's been a long time. Hi, Holly. Uh, she says, some people count sheep while they try to fall asleep. I redesign uniforms in my head. Uh, what do you do? Uh, so, you know, it's funny that you, you mentioned that because uh, I don't really have a, a special way of getting to sleep. But last night, no joke, I did have a dream about stirrups, about baseball stirrups. Uh, I w woke up in the middle of the night and I had been dreaming about being uh, trying out for a team or uh, being on the team, something like that. And the coach was showing everybody the right way to wear their stirrups. And he, he was pleased that I already knew that I knew how the right way to, to put them on and how to wear them and all that. Uh, and I, I tweeted about that today. I mentioned that uh, I had a dream about stirrups and somebody said, a lot of people said actually, well, that mean, that's what happens when you love your work. When you love your job, you, you dream about it. And actually, in, in my experience, when I've hated my work and when I'm stressed out and have anxieties about work, that's when I'm more likely to dream about it. But, uh, but I don't have any anxiety about stirrups. I'm pretty sure this was my first stirrups dream. Uh, so let's look at some more <laughs> questions here. Ba, ba, ba. Do you have any favorite stirrups to show? Actually, yeah, that's a great question. So that's from Don Clark. Give me a second. I didn't think to bring any stirrups out, but hold on a second.
hey, that was some compelling Facebook Live content right there when I walked away, wasn't it? Uh, so I am back and I got a bunch of these heavy wool stirrups. These actually are the ones, do I have both of them? Yeah. These heavy wool stirrups go with the uh, aluminum goods jersey that I showed before. I do have the pants as well. I have these, which are just gorgeous, heavy, again, heavy wool with a, a Northwestern stripe, uh, sort of a cream stripe on the green uh, stirrup, and it has the, uh, the elastic style foot opening. So this probably was from like the 30s or 40s, I would guess. And this actually, <laughs> this still has a, a tag on it that I haven't had the heart to remove. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it. It says, it's stapled on and it says Stahl and Dean Manufacturing Company, 100% pure worsted wool. I don't recall where or how I got these. That's how you know you're getting old when you no longer remember how you acquired all your, not just all your stirrups, all your belongings, period. Uh, here's a really nice set of red, white, and blue ones. Uh, these also have the elastic opening. Um, again, heavy wool. Here's one. I know I have the other one, but I was just rooting around in the drawer and, and just grabbed the one. Uh, really gorgeous pair that's just orange and green at the bottom. Uh, and these go with a really beautiful um, green, heavy wool green uniform, solid green, mono green, green jersey, green pants with orange lettering. Uh, and maybe uh, the next time we do one of these events, maybe I'll bring that one out. Uh, so yes, I, I do indeed have a lot of beautiful stirrups. I don't tend to wear the stirrups uh, that often. Oh, really? Uh huh? Really? Oh, there are lots. Okay. Um, other questions. Ba, ba, ba. Do you have any prototype UniWatch merch to introduce and maybe ask us to vote on? I don't at the moment. Uh, I um, I do I. No, it's down in the basement. Uh, I, I am, so I have something in the works that uh, I think you guys will be interested in, but I don't want to talk about it just yet. Um, what else? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Um, Brendan J says, I only collect uh, jerseys with numbers I like. Would you ever pass on a jersey just because of the number? I would say no. I, I do prefer odd numbers over even numbers, and I prefer prime numbers most of all. But I wouldn't say that that would keep me, um, you know, like if this Briggs and Stratton jersey that I'm wearing right now had, a, had a, an even number, like that wouldn't be, you know, in a perfect world, it would not have an even number. But that would not keep me from, uh, from uh, purchasing it. Ba, 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 ba. What else? Uh, very obvious question. Any update on the Washington football team name and logo change? Has anything leaked out yet? Uh, and the answer to that is no. Uh, there have been some purported leaks, but they've all been debunked. Uh, the most, uh, the one that seemed to gain the most traction and was circulating most widely was um, a shot from a, a local NBC affiliate, I guess in Washington, uh, that showed um, a team official, it was sort of looking over his shoulder and he had a, a clipboard or a sheet of paper or something like that that said commanders. But what was obvious when you, when the full context of the shot was that that was a name they were considering, but it was not necessarily what they were going with. And obviously the team would not allow um, and, and, and a local uh, TV news operation to show something like that um, ahead of the unveiling. And the official unveiling, uh, as most of you know, will be on February 2nd. Uh, sometimes I know about these things and I'm just not allowed to talk about them yet. That is not the case uh, in this instance. I do not know. Uh, I don't have any inside info. Um, and really, I haven't had a dog in the fight in terms of the name. I'm, I'm not a fan of the team. Uh, I don't hate the team either, but I, I have no emotional stake in the team. My uh, main thing was just to get rid of the old name and whatever they come up with is fine with me uh, in that regard. Um, Let's see what else we have in terms of questions. Um, Robert Brashear, longtime reader, asks, would you ever dive into how Major League Baseball teams trim and cut their fields, like the unique and strange cut on first and third by the Yankees 
uh, the pathways to home and the mound, et cetera. And yes, definitely. Uh, and in fact, uh, I know there are some readers, probably including you, Robert, who've asked about those little cuts. It's like a little, it's almost like a talon uh, around first and third base where the, the infield uh, sort of turns the corner at Yankee Stadium. And so that is something that's definitely in the realm of athletics aesthetics. It's definitely something I'm interested in. Uh, and yeah, uh, so yes, that is that is something I, I would enjoy pursuing. Uh, I've written, I think, a, a decent number of times about uh, baseball fields that have the path from the mound to home plate. Uh, in fact, in my recent piece on Bolton about Buck Showalter uh, and how he has intersected uh, with athletics aesthetics, I mentioned that that was his idea uh, for the Diamondbacks uh, when he was uh, the first manager of the Diamondbacks. It was his idea that they include the dirt path uh, from home, from home plate uh, to the mound, and then the the Tigers when they all, when they opened their new stadium, uh, Comerica Park, they I, I assume were influenced by that because they also included uh, just a few years later when that stadium opened, they included the dirt path. Uh, the Tigers still have it. The Diamondbacks got rid of it. I think in 2018, it was either it was right around there, give or take a year. So they no longer have it, but the, the Tigers still have it. I, I personally, I love the dirt path. It makes it seem like a fastball is so hot and like crackling with like fire and energy that it's like singeing and burning a path as it goes from the pitcher's hand uh, over the plate. Um, another thing that I have written about is uh, at Dodger Stadium, the batter's box lines and also the catcher's box um, are thinner than at other stadiums. The lines themselves are, they, they look like, like they're drawn like the equivalent of pencil instead of a marker. Uh, and I, and in fact, I, I believe it was last spring, I interviewed uh, the head groundskeeper from Dodger Stadium and we talked about that. It was really interesting, uh, the story behind it. It was that a, a player whose name he couldn't recall because it was something like 15 years ago, uh, when Major League Baseball began mandating that they include the front line of the batter's box, which for a while they hadn't been bothering to do very clearly, uh, like extend it all the way, like basically the top of the bracket, if you imagine a batter's box as a bracket, like an open bracket and a closed bracket. Um, they, they had to make that line longer and it distracted one of the Dodgers players. He said he wasn't used to seeing it there uh, and it was sort of messing him up at the plate. And so the groundskeepers decided to make those lines thinner they couldn't eliminate the line completely, but they could make it less prominent by making the line, the chalk line, thinner. And so uh, they did that to accommodate that one player, and then it stuck. Uh, and they uh, they are now the only team uh, that has retained that. As uh, it, it's it's interesting. It's you, you think of we think of things like batters boxes and foul lines and all of that as the same in every stadium, but uh, and I guess they are in every stadium except Dodger Stadium. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, Demetrius Thompson asks, any Negro League jerseys? No, I do not have, well, again, I, I tend not to buy retail jerseys. So, uh, and obviously there, there aren't any uh, game used Negro League jerseys floating around, at least I don't think so. Uh, those have all been snapped up by museums or, or lost, unfortunately, to the, the eddies and currents of time. Uh, but no, I do not have any Negro League jerseys. Um, uh, Demetrius Thompson also says, save this video, I'll watch the rest later. So yes, I will do that. Um, ba, 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 ba. Damon Hill asks, do you know whatever happened to straightcashhomie.net? I do not. Uh, as I recall, Straight Cash Homie was uh, a site devoted to people wearing unusual jerseys or jersey fouls, as some people call them, or, or really great jerseys. It was, it was devoted more to fans wearing jerseys, which is not what I cover, as opposed to players wearing jerseys, which is what I cover. And I never really, I, I don't know who was behind it. Uh, I never was in touch with those people. I do remember briefly when I was at ESPN, uh, when page two still existed, uh, they they got the, my editors got the straight cash homies, homie guys to do uh, a, like a post or an article or something like that. And I, and I was like, hmm, like, I thought I was the uniform guy. Now they're bringing in these guys. Uh, but I guess it, it, it either didn't go well or I, for whatever reason, I, I believe that was just a one-time thing. Um, but no, I don't know what happened to that website uh, or who those guys were. 
um, ba, 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 Stevens uh, Santangelo adds, and yes, I should have mentioned this, uh, that the path from home, from home plate to the mound or, or from the mound to home plate uh, began because uh, a lot of baseball grounds were also cricket grounds and that path gets worn out during cricket. Uh, and so that's where that comes from. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What Super Bowl, uh, Rob Naylor adds, what Super Bowl matchup would you like to see this year based solely on the uni matchup? Uh, solely on the uni matchup. In the AFC, I would say probably, uh, I would like the AFC team to be the Bills, because I think uh, as long as they don't go like mono blue or mono red, I think the Bills are a really good looking team right now. And for the NFC, I mean, I'm, I'm a 49ers fan. I have to say the Niners and happily, the Niners are a pretty good looking team right now. They have been through most of their history. Uh, so I think that would be a great looking uh, Super Bowl, actually, Niners versus Bills. Uh, Packers are a good looking team. I hate to say it, but the Cowboys are a good looking team. So, uh, you know, I think we have a decent shot at a, a good looking Super Bowl this year for sure. Uh, the, you know, some of the, I, I guess, the worst case scenario would be if uh, the Cardinals make it to the Super Bowl, right? They're one of the worst looking teams in the league. Uh, and so uh, let's hope that doesn't happen. If there are Cardinals fans out there, you know, I'm not rooting against your team because I hate the team, but uh, not a fan of the uniforms. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left. <laughs> what else do we have here? Ba, 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 ba. Logan Iron says, I recently read a book titled Ballpark, Baseball in the American City that covers the evolution of architecture and location of baseball parks. Do your passions for athletics aesthetics cross over into any of these tangential areas? I definitely care about ballpark design. Uh, you know, like a lot of people, I think Camden Yards is a cool park. Fenway Park is an awesome ballpark. I've been lucky enough to see a couple of games there. I've been to Wrigley. I, like, I do tend to like the, the older park or the older style parks. Um, so yeah, uh, ballpark architecture definitely interests me. Um, what was the other thing? The location of baseball parks. That's interesting too. I, you know, the, the baseball stadiums now are tend to be, uh, located like out in a bean field somewhere or out, you know, far from the city center, or at least that was the case for a long time. It started, the, the pendulum started shifting a little bit back the other way, uh, with Camden Yards and with some other ballparks. I think it is interesting if you can integrate your stadium into a neighborhood, you know, as a Mets fan, I, I've spent my whole life trekking out to Shea Stadium and, and now to City Field, which is, I don't want to say it's the middle of nowhere because some people do live there, but it's not really the heart. It's not the heart of New York City or even the heart of Queens. And it's it's not part of what you think of as a neighborhood. Like if you go to a, a ball game in St. Louis or Cincinnati or a lot of other places where the stadium is really integrated into the, the neighborhood of the city, people can walk there after work. Uh, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so I am interested in that. I haven't written about that so much. That's sort of more of like an urban planning kind of issue, uh, but I am interested in it. Um, I think we're going to wrap this up because I, I look at the clock on the wall, as they say, and we're, we're about to 730 and I sort of promised myself I wouldn't spend more than a half hour on this for the first time. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I hope you guys did too. Uh, feel free to keep leaving comments uh, about what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, because if I, I think I'd like to do this again, and, and I want to do it in a way that makes sense for all of us, that, that you guys enjoy it and that I enjoy it too. So feel free to say what you'd like to see next time, um, you know, what sort of content you'd like to have, and, and hopefully we can make this a regular or at least a semi-regular thing. Thanks so much. I appreciate all of you uh, who tuned in and left comments and left questions. And uh, my apologies for any technical issues. And hopefully uh, I'll get more polished as the, at this as we go on. Take care.